The BAFTA Awards. This is one of the major precursor ceremonies we look to year to year to see what might win at the Oscars. I would say in the last decade especially, most of the winners at BAFTA do go on to win at the Academy Awards, but occasionally we do get some different winners in the top categories. Last month I made a video about 10 times the Golden Globes got it right and the Oscars got it wrong. You seem to enjoy that one, so I am back now with 10 times the BAFTA Awards got it right and the Oscars got it wrong. I have some very fun choices here, and I decided this time to just go with the acting categories. Now, just like that Golden Globes video, I have one strict rule. I am only including people in this category if they actually beat the person who eventually won at the Oscars. The 10 names I have in this video are people who won at BAFTA over the person who won at Oscar. Are you ready? Here we go. Number 10, Best Actor, Jamie Bell, Billy Elliot. And to be nominated with all these guys, like Tom Hanks and Russell Crowe and Jeffrey Rush and Michael Douglas and all these guys, um, and I was kind of thinking not bothering coming. Um. <laughs> So you might not be aware of this one because Jamie Bell did not get an Oscar nomination for Best Actor at the Oscars. It has proven to be very difficult for young actors to be nominated in Lead Actor at the Academy Awards. It happens here and there. Like most recently, I would say it was Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name. I think he was around 20 when he got that lead actor Oscar nomination. But Jamie Bell was only in his teens when Billy Elliot came out in 2000. It is one of the best performances of that year. I absolutely love him in that film. And one of the coolest things BAFTA has ever done was give their lead actor trophy to Jamie Bell over some other fine candidates, including Russell Crowe for Gladiator. Crowe, of course, went on to win the Oscar that year. It's a fine performance. I don't hate that Oscar win. But imagine if Jamie Bell had won the Academy Award instead. That would have been an all-timer. I mean, the guy wasn't even nominated. It's insulting, honestly. The Academy really screwed that one up. Number nine, Best Supporting Actress, Kate Winslet, Steve Jobs. And my wonderful husband, Ned, who gave his seat to my mum so she could sit next to me. Neddy, you're in this room, I know you are. <laughs> Hi, babe, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> So I would argue, and I don't want to be mean about this, but one of the more lackluster Oscar wins of the last decade was Alicia Vikander for The Danish Girl in Best Supporting Actress in early 2016. That one really bugs me because she should have won that trophy for her much better performance in Ex Machina from director Alex Garland. She was rightfully nominated at the Golden Globes in Supporting Actress for Ex Machina, and lead actress for The Danish Girl, but at the Oscars, they put her in supporting actress for Danish Girl, category fraud to the nth degree, and she ended up winning over what I do think is a much better performance, Kate Winslet in Steve Jobs. You might not remember this, but Kate Winslet was pretty competitive to win at the Oscars for that performance. She won Best Supporting Actress at BAFTA and the Golden Globes, so like she could have taken the Oscar as well. It had been, what, seven years since she had won Best Actress for The Reader. I think what happened at the end of the day was that Steve Jobs was a major flop at the box office when it came out at the end of October. It wasn't really a movie people were talking about and celebrating very much in the early months of the following year. So I do think that hurt Winslet's chances when it came to the Oscars. But still, who cares about box office? It should be about the better performance and I do think Kate Winslet gives a much better performance in Steve Jobs than Alicia Vikander gives in The Danish Girl. Number eight, Best Supporting Actor, Jude Law, The Talented Mr. Ripley. To be honest, I'm, I'm a little relieved you're going. I think we've seen enough of each other for a while. So I already talked about this category in my video about when the Golden Globes got it right, when they gave Tom Cruise the trophy for Magnolia over Michael Caine for the Cider House Rules. At BAFTA, they didn't go with Michael Caine or Tom Cruise. They went with another great choice, 
Jude Law in The Talented Mr. Ripley. That was an astonishing breakthrough performance from Jude Law. He is so sexy and dangerous and captivating in that role. Before doing my research this morning, I wasn't even aware that Jude Law had won the BAFTA for that performance. And I love that win. It's so great. I could not find video of it online, but here is a picture of Jude Law holding his BAFTA award. This is a very cool victory that would have made a great Oscar victory as well. I've been very honest on this channel about my feelings toward that Michael Caine Oscar win for the Cider House Rules. It's fine. He gives a wonderful speech. I'm not mad about that win. But I think the other four performances in that category at the Oscars are all better, are all way more interesting. And so, yeah, if Tom Cruise couldn't win the Oscar for Magnolia, another great win would have been Jude Law for The Talented Mr. Ripley. Number seven, Best Actress, Emmanuel Riva Amore. And the BAFTA goes to... Emmanuel Riva. So I made a long, comprehensive video all about the Best Actress race of 2012 back in November. And I did talk in that video about how I am still conflicted today about that Best Actress Academy Award victory for Jennifer Lawrence in Silver Linings Playbook. Like Michael Caine in The Cider House Rules, it's not a bad win. I like that performance fine. But I do think there were at least two other more deserving performances that should have won that night, like Jessica Chastain for Zero Dark Thirty, and especially for Emmanuel Riva in Amour. That Riva performance is spellbinding and emotionally devastating. It was definitely one of the best performances of the year, and I think it is so great that BAFTA awarded Emmanuel Riva their Best Actress trophy. I mean, sadly, Riva wasn't there to give a speech, but we did get to see ultimate crybaby David O. Russell not very happy about his star Jennifer Lawrence losing. There was absolutely a shot for Riva to win the Oscar too. I mean, Amour got into Best Picture and Best Director. Jennifer Lawrence was only 22 years old at the time, so some Academy members might have wanted to award a veteran rather than a very young performer who's just kind of getting her start in the industry. It was also Emmanuel Riva's birthday. I mean, it was her birthday that night. It would have been a really cool win in so many ways. Sadly, it didn't happen, but at least Riva took her well-deserved prize at BAFTA. Number six, Best Supporting Actor, Jake Gyllenhaal, Brokeback Mountain. I kind of wanted to go, hey, but, hey, yeah, yeah, Jamie will love that. One of the most difficult parts, honestly, of the 2006 award season was constantly seeing for weeks and months the Brokeback Mountain actors always losing to other people. In Best Supporting Actress, Michelle Williams kept losing to Rachel Weisz for The Constant Gardener. In Best Actor, Heath Ledger kept losing to Philip Seymour Hoffman for Capote. And then in Best Supporting Actor, Jake Gyllenhaal just really couldn't compete much that season with Paul Giamatti for Cinderella Man and George Clooney for Syriana. But, and you might not remember this, at BAFTA, they gave Best Supporting Actor not to Giamatti or Clooney, but to Jake Gyllenhaal for Brokeback Mountain. This is a wonderful speech from the actor. If you've never seen it, go check it out on YouTube. He's kind of flustered, doesn't really know what to say. He is so charming here, and it's a very much deserved win. I know there has been some talk here and there that the Gyllenhaal performance in Brokeback Mountain should have been in lead actor, not supporting. I've never really bought into that. I think there are large chunks of the film Gyllenhaal is not in. I always felt that Heath Ledger had the lead role in that movie, much more than Gyllenhaal. I think this is a fantastic BAFTA win that sadly did not translate into an Oscar victory. George Clooney won there for Syriana. I mean, almost 20 years later, is anyone really talking about Syriana or the Clooney performance? I definitely am not. But Brokeback Mountain still holds a very special place in my heart. I love everything about that movie. 
especially the performances, Jake Gyllenhaal, I think, would have made a much better Best Supporting Actor Oscar win that year. Number five, Best Actor, Bill Murray, Lost in Translation. So, Bill can't be here, but Sophia Coppola will accept the award. So here was another competitive category, a very exciting competition for a few weeks. Best Actor in early 2004. It kind of looked like it was going Sean Penn's way for Mystic River, but then Johnny Depp won at SAG for Pirates of the Caribbean. And then there was Bill Murray, who won a Golden Globe Award in Comedy or Musical for Lost in Translation. And then a few weeks later, he won the BAFTA Award as well in Lead Actor. I have made a video about this race as well, and I've said it on the channel time and time again, I do think when it came to Best Actor of 2003, Bill Murray should have won at the Oscars. It's not the flashiest performance. He doesn't get a scene like Sean Penn does in Mystic River, where he is screaming and crying to the heavens. Bill Murray in Lost in Translation is not an obvious choice for an Oscar victory, but I just think he is so moving in that film. Scene to scene, he finds just the right tone, to play that character, and it just kind of envelops you with this authenticity. He is so sweet and genuine. And that final scene, oh my God, that final scene. It's just a beautiful movie. I do think it's Bill Murray's best work on film. And even though Sean Penn was already overdue at that point on his fourth Oscar nomination, and the whole room gives him a standing ovation after he wins, I would have much preferred Bill Murray won there for Lost in Translation, like he did at the Golden Globes and at BAFTA. Sadly, he wasn't there to give a speech, and Sofia Coppola accepted on his behalf. BAFTA voters really loved Lost in Translation. Not only did they give Best Actor to Bill Murray, they gave Best Actress to Scarlett Johansson, who wasn't even nominated for her glorious performance in that film at the Oscars. Number four, Best Supporting Actress, Carrie Condon, The Banshees of Inishirin. I have to thank my horses and my dogs because <laughs> they showed me so much love and gave me so much meaning in my life. Um, thank you, I'm really, really grateful. So, it's been almost a year since Jamie Lee Curtis won the Oscar for Everything Everywhere All at Once in the Best Supporting Actress category for a few weeks there. I was starting to warm up to it. I was trying to feel good about it because I love Jamie Lee Curtis. I always have. I mean, going back to Halloween and True Lies and Freaky Friday, she is a fantastic actress. I have always adored. But a year later, I, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling, guys. I am struggling with that Oscar win. It's not aging very well, to be honest. It's not. I think pretty much anyone else in that category would have been a better choice including another person from the same movie, Stephanie Hsu. Angela Bassett was the early frontrunner in that category after she won at the Golden Globes and at Critics' Choice. But for me, ever since I saw The Banshees of Inishirin the previous November, I was all in on Carrie Condon. I thought she was going to sweep the season. She is wonderful in that movie, the voice of reason. She's funny, she's emotional. It is a very complex three-dimensional character she portrays beautifully. It's kind of shocking to me a year later that Carrie Condon only won a single major televised prize, and that was at BAFTA. I guess, thank God, there was the one at least. She got to give a speech, and for a split second, I was like, okay, she won at BAFTA. Maybe the Oscar is still possible. Let's see what happens at SAG. Well, Jamie Lee Curtis won at SAG, and then she won the Oscar, and that was that for Carrie Condon. But yeah, I do think Condon in The Banshees of Inishirin was the best performance in the category. I'm happy she won at BAFTA. She also should have won at the Academy Awards. Number three, Best Supporting Actor, Ray Fiennes, Schindler's List. No. They're not gone. They're here. Okay, so Tommy Lee Jones is perfectly fine in The Fugitive. 
That's a great movie. Jones is kind of a hoot in a supporting role in that. He has a great scene with Harrison Ford, some good one-liners. But when you think back on all the great performances in film in the 1990s, I do find it completely bewildering that Tommy Lee Jones won the Oscar in early 1994 in Best Supporting Actor over Ray Fiennes in Schindler's List. How did that happen? Seriously. Like, what went down there? Ray Fiennes in Schindler's List was such the obvious choice to win there, I almost feel like I have to make a video about that race because, I mean, Tommy Lee Jones had been nominated before. He was very prolific around that time. I think the industry loves him and they wanted to give him this trophy. Ray Fiennes was a bit newer of a face, I guess. But his performance in Schindler's List is so brilliant and chilling and precise. And Schindler's List was the big Oscar winner that year, winning Best Picture and Best Director among many other trophies. It just feels really strange to me. Fines should have won Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars. Thank God he did win at BAFTA over Tommy Lee Jones. Again, there's no speech I could find online, but here is a picture of Ray Fines holding his BAFTA trophy. BAFTA definitely got this one right. The Oscars got it wrong. Number two, Best Actress, Kate Blanchett, Elizabeth. I will have one mistress here. And no master. Now, I would say, especially these days, one of the most controversial acting Oscar wins of the 1990s is Gwyneth Paltrow for Shakespeare in Love. I made a top 10 worst acting Oscar wins video last year, which is about to hit 500,000 views, by the way. Holy shit. And I feel like the comment I've gotten the most is, how could you not have Gwyneth Paltrow on this list? I mean, I don't know if that is the worst win of all time. It's definitely not one of the best. But yeah, pretty much anyone else in the category that year would have made a better win at the Oscars in Best Actress. Fernanda Montenegro for Central Station would have made an all-timer win. And then there was Kate Blanchett in Elizabeth. I have always maintained that Kate Blanchett should have won the Best Actress Oscar in early 1999 for Elizabeth. That is a much better performance than Gwyneth Paltrow in Shakespeare in Love. And Blanchett had a chance. I mean, she won the Golden Globe for Best Actress in a Motion Picture Drama and she won the BAFTA Award for Best Actress. Again, there's no video I could find online of Blanchett's speech at BAFTA from 99, but here are a couple pictures of her at the ceremony. She is so brilliant in that film, she should have won the Oscar as well, but Gwyneth Paltrow got swept up in the Harvey Weinstein Miramax machine that was Shakespeare in Love that year, a movie that shockingly went on to win the Best Picture Oscar as well as Best Actress. I do think there were some shenanigans behind the scenes, and that's partly why Kate Blanchett didn't win at the Academy Awards. But thankfully, she won at BAFTA, and what a well-deserved victory it was. And finally, that takes me to my number one choice. What do I think is the number one example of when BAFTA got it right, and the Oscars got it wrong. I didn't have to think too long about this one. It is one of my favorite film performances of the last 20 years. My number one choice is Best Actor, Colin Firth, A Single Man. An encounter with, with Tom Ford is to come away feeling um, better groomed, <laughs> more fragrant, and um, <laughs> more nominated than one has ever been before. <laughs> What an incredible, heartbreaking performance Colin Firth gives in Tom Ford's directorial debut, A Single Man, from 2009. This was my favorite film of the year. It's one of my favorite LGBTQ films of all time. Colin Firth is so good in that movie, I think he should have swept the season. He should have won at BAFTA and Golden Globes, and Critics' Choice, and SAG, and the Oscars. But as it turned out, this was the year of a career Oscar award. 
a Legacy Award for a performance that's fine, that's okay, but it's definitely not an Academy Awards victory that has aged very well, Jeff Bridges for Crazy Hearts. I mean, is anybody watching Crazy Heart today? Is anybody thinking about, talking about that Jeff Bridges Oscar win other than me right now? I don't think so. The 2010 award season was an emotional roller coaster for me because this was the year Sandra Bullock won Best Actress for The Blind Side. I didn't really think she deserved to win for that movie, but Sandra Bullock is my favorite actress, so it was also very exciting at the same time. And then in Best Actor, I never felt that Jeff Bridges was worthy of an Oscar for Crazy Hearts. It just felt like Academy members decided, okay, this is Jeff Bridges' fifth Oscar nomination. He's never won. Let's give it to him for Crazy Hearts over some better performances like Jeremy Renner in The Hurt Locker and especially Colin Firth in A Single Man. For his mesmerizing performance, Colin Firth got in pretty much everywhere but he kept losing and losing some more to Jeff Bridges. But BAFTA, thank God, came through for people like me who thought Colin Firth gave the best performance in that category that award season. His speech is fantastic. Go check it out on YouTube if you've never seen it before. I mean, yes, I was disappointed at the Oscars when Jeff Bridges won over Colin Firth. But let's be honest, Firth never had a shot to win at the Oscars because he was a single man's only nomination across the board at the Academy Awards, which is crazy to me. Like, how did a single man not at least get a screenplay nomination for Tom Ford? Hello. And then just a year later, the King's Speech earned Colin Firth his Academy Award in Best Actor, so I only had to wait a year to see it happen, even though it's for a different movie. To this day, I still kind of pretend Colin Firth won his Oscar for a single man and not The King's Speech, even though he is also great in The King's Speech. There's just something about his performance in A Single Man. I just find him so perfectly cast and incredible in that role, whereas Jeff Bridges in Crazy Hearts you can kind of take it or leave it. In early 2010, this was absolutely a case where the Oscars got it wrong and BAFTA got it right. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing. And let me know in the comments below, what are some other examples you can think of where BAFTA got it right and the Oscars got it wrong? We'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.